I want to talk about China a little bit. So how it, you know, at the Olympics, right at the top of the Olympics, Vladimir Putin, Xi Jinping signing this 5,000 page agreement, you know, something clearly in the works for a while. What are, what are, what are the implications of that with respect to what's happening now in Ukraine? Look, I think that the Biden team is so weak that they are allowing Russia and China to work together. And they, they don't, they're not natural allies. They're not two countries that have the same goals or think strategically in the same way. They certainly don't have the same styles. And so we should be able to, to have as a U.S. policy um, a, a way to make sure that Russia and China are not ganging up on the West. The West is, is not doing well. The, I believe the Germans have left the Western alliance. They are absolutely for the transatlantic alliance, but they don't want the transatlantic alliance to be Western facing. They want to be everybody's friend. They want to have a foreign policy like Switzerland. As long as they can sell cars in Beijing and Tehran and Moscow, they're going to say, let's be friends with everybody. It's why they don't want crippling sanctions. It's why they're telling Estonia, don't um, you know, arm uh, Ukraine. Um, it's a real problem, and I think that we need to call it out that the Germans have left the Western alliance. And when it comes to Russia and China, you know, there's got to be a way that we use the Western alliance to remind both sides that they're not natural uh, partners and that we can create some tensions there by emphasizing what we know to be a different uh, set of goals. But, but any thoughts on how that would might work? Or? Well, I spent eight years at the UN, and I think that we did a pretty good job of, of making sure that Russia and China didn't come together to beat up on us all the time. Look, they're, again, they're not natural allies. There are ways that we can emphasize that uh, you know, we can work with one over the other. I mean, certainly when it comes to um, China, we know that India is a competitor. And the more we can uh, make clear that we want a better relationship with India, which I think Donald Trump did brilliantly, Modi, uh, that is going to help. That's going to be able to help um, make sure that Beijing doesn't get uh, their way. I think, you know, we, we have a problem in America because the Chinese have been able to infiltrate Hollywood, uh, academia, business, and our politicians. As acting director of national intelligence, I had to make sure that we gave defensive briefings to American politicians at the local level, the state level, and the federal level because they stumbled into a relationship with a Chinese uh, government official or somebody who worked for the intelli uh, Chinese intelligence agency and they didn't know it. So some people are suggesting that China may take advantage of this, um, I guess the focus of the West on Ukraine right now, obviously there's this massive focus, to potentially make a move on Taiwan. Or others are saying it's a longer game, they really just want to see what happens and how much damage they might suffer if they were to do that. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? Well, I try not to be in the business of predicting the future. Um, I try to remember that I'm a diplomat and I want to solve problems peacefully. I don't want to get to the point where the State Department is shoved aside and the Defense Department has to come in. And so I think that diplomats should be talking about these issues. I think that we need to have better diplomats at the State Department in the political appointed positions to be thinking about these issues. These are serious issues. And right now, because of Joe Biden's disastrous Afghanistan pullout, there are a lot of countries that are beginning to look at us and, and say we're weak. You add the UAE issue of the Houthis attacking. That's another big message for the, the Middle East. Of course, everyone's talking about the Taiwan-China issue, but I think these are, are solved diplomatically, and we need to have uh, diplomats who are unapologetic about America being for America, the America first uh, strategy, I think is good for the world. And we should articulate that. Why is America first good for the world? Because when America concentrates on uh, democracy, human rights, the rule of law, we certainly benefit, but the world does too when there are, are rules. 
and I, I think we, we need to start making better decisions about uh, what, what we do with our foreign policy and the implications for that. And I'll give you the example of the World Trade Organization. You know, 20 plus years ago, we thought if we let China into the World Trade Organization, that they would continue going down this road of reform. They would continue towards human rights, the rule of law. The idea was engagement, and I'm actually for engagement, but I'm also for trying to find a way to benchmark and measure whether engagement worked. And I think by any measure, the Chinese have gotten worse since they've been in the World Trade Organization. Human rights has gotten worse in China. The rule of law is worse. And so I, I'm somebody who wants to do engagement, but also wants to say our engagement didn't work. And so we should try a different strategy. No, absolutely. I just gave a speech today about, uh, which included, you know, the decoupling of trade from human rights in 1994 by Clinton, sort of tearing up this executive order he had that, that, that held those together. So there wasn't this, you know, assessment that, that you're kind of describing. So how important is such an assessment? Uh, like for, for cup, the recoupling of human rights and trade, for example, is that, would that be part of a, a proper policy? Look, I, I, I think that we're complicated people, we're very diverse people, and that you can't decouple anything, right? You, everything is related, and it all goes into the criteria to, to form a policy. I wouldn't decouple anything. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, recouple, in this case, right? right? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I think President Trump didn't have to worry about coupling, decoupling, or recoupling. Okay. I think he looked at the policy and just said, look, there's a whole bunch of factors here, and let's use all those factors.